Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course Nutrition for the Family. This is the seventh module in which we are studying about nutritional care for the children. And this is the third lecture of this module in which we shall be studying about physiological changes and nutritional requirement of school going children. I am Dr. Jaspreet Kaur, presently working as Associate Professor in Government College for Girls, Ludhiana, Punjab affiliated to Punjab University Chandigarh and this project is funded by DTH Swayam Prabha MHRD New Delhi. We have already studied about growth and development during early years of life in which we studied about the nutritional requirements of macro and micronutrients and relationship of nutrition and infection and food requirements of preschoolers. And then we also studied about the dietary guidelines to improve the nutritional status of preschoolers. After studying about the nutrition care and the guidelines for the first six years of the life, now let us move ahead and study about the nutritional requirements of six to nine year old school going children. In this lecture, we shall be focusing on the growth and development during the school going age in which we will study what are the changes in the physical growth what are the changes in the body composition and what are the socio psychological changes that occur during this age and then we will study about the nutritional requirements of macronutrients that is energy protein fat and carbohydrates and micronutrients that is minerals and vitamins in this lecture. School going years of the life, they are considered as the latent period of growth. As the rate of growth, it slows down and the body changes, they occur gradually. In the previous lectures, we have studied about the changes that happen during the preschooler years when the growth and development is very fast. So, reserves are being held in this period so that because there will be uh, another phase that is the adolescence where again the growth is going to pick up. So this age of 6 to 12 years it is also known as lull before the storm. Let us study about the physical growth that happens during this phase. Now the growth during this phase, it proceeds at a moderate rate. It is not as fast as we have seen in the case of preschoolers. The yearly increase in the height, it varies from 4 to 7.7 centimeter in case of boys and 4.9 to 7.2 centimeter in case of girls. And the yearly increase in the weight, it varies from 2.5 kgs to 6.6 kgs in case of boys and uh, from 2.3 to 5.2 kilograms in case of girls. As the growth proceeds during the childhood, there is changes in the body proportion also. That there will be changes in the water composition of the body and the percent water and then muscle tissues and the skeletal structure will also change with the growing years and the body water is going to decrease and the adipose tissue and the skeletal mass it increases. Usually the girls they have higher deposition of body fat as compared to the boys of the same age who have larger reserves of muscle tissues and during childhood the boys they are taller and heavier at each stage other than uh, just one age group that is 11 to 12 years when the girls are usually heavier and 
taller than the boys. There are a lot of psychosocial changes that happen during this period. As the child steps into school age period, he develops the ability to work out problems on his own and participates in the group activities which are held in the school. Initially, the child was having a very confined social life when he was a preschooler and he was totally dependent upon his parents. But as he is growing older, he is going to school and exploring a different set of friends and other people. There is change from a dependence on the parental standards towards the standards which are set by his friends or his peers. This is a foundation which is uh, held for the maturity during the adolescence. And in this period, there are also a lot of emotional stresses, competitive behaviors and daydreaming also brings about a drastic change in the previous learning and the personality pattern of the child year after year. And all these socio-psychological changes, they affect the dietary pattern of the child. Now let us discuss what are the nutritional requirements during six to nine years of age. During childhood, since the body is growing to attain an adult structure and the physical activity also increases because of the regular school activities, the needs of all the nutrients, they are high and they keep on increasing. So let's discuss the nutritional needs of the school going children. A constant gain in weight and height, it is an important index of ensuring the child's growth and development. And to ascertain the growth of child, we can use some reference weight and height tables. We can use uh, World Health Organization charts or we can use certain local growth charts. And uh, it is considered that the reference weight of seven to nine years is 25.3 kilograms. Now, this reference weight has been given by, R, in the book RDA 2020, given by the ICMR. And if we see uh, in this table, uh, we can see the how they have split the average weight of the boys and girls falling in the 7, 8 and 9 year category. In case of boys, once the boys are of 7 years of age, he, the average weight should be around 22.9 kilograms and for girls it is 22.4 and for eight year olds it is 25.4 kilograms and 25 in case of girls and for nine year olds it is 28.1 and 28.2 so therefore considering this whole range an average of 25.3 kilograms is considered to be body weight of a reference school going child the requirement of energy, it is dependent upon two components during this age group. So the first component is the total energy expenditure. That is the physiological cost of uh, growing up. And along with that, there is energy deposition. We can always say energy cost of growth in these children. And for the estimation of energy for this age group, two components they are considered. Now, what are these two components? The first one is, as we have just discussed, that is total energy expenditure. And second component is the physical activity level. In RDA 2020, the total energy expenditure and physical activity level of reference children is considered. Now, the reference children, they are healthy boys and girls who are having moderately active physical life. So the actual requirement in specific population, it has to be adjusted for the actual weight and physical activity level of that population. Let us see the energy requirements which are given uh, in the RDA 2020. As we can see, 
uh, they, we have age in years between six to seven years, then seven to eight years, eight to nine and nine to 10. And the total energy requirements for boys and girls, it is for the first group, it is 1508 calories for boys. And for girls, it is 1408. And for seven to eight years, it is 1635 kilocalories and 1510 for boys and girls. And uh, at eight to nine years, it is 1762 and 1626 kilocalories respectively. And for nine to 10, it is 1896 and 1761. So as the age is uh, growing, it is increasing the total energy requirement, it is also increasing at a steady pace. The protein, it is needed to meet the demands of growth and adequate protein, it is needed for the growth of muscles and as the bones, they are also growing. So, it is needed for bone matrix also. And in children, the protein energy ratio is low. This is because of high energy need. And this happens because the protein requirement, it is constant at different levels of activity. And as we have seen in the previous slide that the energy, it depends upon the physical activity. It, its requirement changes, but this is not the case with the protein. So that affects the protein energy ratio. And for this group, the range of uh, protein requirement is 0.75 to 0.9 grams per kilogram body weight. Energy needs are high. High fat amount, it helps in meeting the heightened requirements of energy. It helps in reducing the bulk of the diet. It enhances the taste of the dishes also. And along with that, it provides essential fatty acids also. So the total fat intake below 25% of the total calories, it is considered to affect the growth of the children. So 25% is the minimum contribution which should come from the fats. And uh, to provide this 25% of total fat calories, a minimum level of visible fat in the children, uh, it should be in the range between 25 to 35 grams per day. And the fat coming from the food sources should provide around 10% of the total calories. Now let's study about the macronutrient requirements with the help of this chart. As we have uh, just discussed about the macronutrients between the age group of 7 to 9 years, the reference body weight is in the kilograms, it is 25.3 kilograms and coming to the energy requirements, the estimated average requirements given by the RDA 2020 guidelines is 1700 kilocalories and we do not have any recommended dietary allowance because we do not uh, wish to add any safety margin for that and the calculation of uh, individual cases, they can be compared with the reference values. and uh, for the protein requirement, the estimated average requirement is 19 gram per day and the recommended dietary allowance which is calculated after adding the safety margin which affects the availability of protein, it is 23 grams per day. And coming to the fats, the RDA has been fixed at 30 grams daily for 7 to 9 year old children. And for carbohydrates, it is suggested that the minimum requirement of 100 grams should be included in the diet of a 7 to 9 year old child for proper brain function. And along with that, there is additional recommendation of adequate intake of fiber because we know fiber, it has immense health benefits. And for these children, the uh, adequate intake of 26 gram of fiber is recommended daily. And this is the acceptable micronutrient distribution range. Now, this is the uh, nutrient range, which is suggested that the contribution coming from the protein should be 
5 to 15 percent of the total calories if we say it is 1700 so 5 to 15 percent of the calories should be provided by the proteins and the contribution coming from the fat should be in the range of 25 percent to 35 percent as we have just discussed that the minimum contribution should be 25 and the maximum contribution can be 35 and uh, around 45 to 65 percent of the calories they should come from the carbohydrates now this was about the macronutrient distribution now let us study about the micronutrient requirements during this age group let's discuss about the mineral requirements first calcium and phosphorus they are needed to meet the skeletal growth demands and to improve the bone density the diet should provide adequate amount of calcium and phosphorus the deficiency can affect the bone health and the growth during this period regarding iron the main increase in the body weight it increases the iron requirements during childhood the body store of iron it builds up to 5 milligram per kilogram body weight which is maintained till the child hits menarche and the iron deficiency anemia it is considered a risk factor for the poor educational problem in the school aged children and uh, in among these children the physiological requirements and the bioavailability from a cereal based diet it is assumed that the absorption of iron is around 6% and uh, regarding iron if the child is taking any supplements to the tolerable upper limit it has been fixed to be at 40 milligrams per day iodine it is needed to prevent the iodine deficiency disorder among children because the deficiency of iodine it can hamper the physical growth and the mental growth of the children and zinc it is known to play a critical role in the biological processes which includes the cell growth differentiation and metabolism and deficiency in this micronutrient it restricts the childhood growth and it decreases the resistance to the infections this contribute to the morbidity and the mortality of young children so therefore the diet should provide adequate amount of these minerals let us study about the rda of various minerals with the help of this chart between the age group of 7 to 9 years we have already studied about the reference body weight that is 25.3 kilograms the requirement of calcium the ear that is estimated average requirement is 500 milligrams and an rda of 650 milligrams has been suggested and for the magnesium the estimated average requirement is 144 milligrams whereas the recommended dietary allowances 175 milligrams for the iron the ear is 10 milligrams and an rda is 15 milligram when we add safety margin to the ear regarding zinc it is again calculated in the milligrams per day so the ear is 4.9 and RDA which is derived after adding the safety margin it is 5.9 milligrams per day regarding iodine it is calculated and recommended in micrograms per day the EAR is 65 micrograms and an RDA of 90 micrograms has been recommended daily for this age group let us study about the RDA of various vitamins for this age group. Coming to the water soluble vitamins, the requirement of B vitamins, particularly vitamin B1, B2, and B3, that is thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin, they are based on the energy metabolism and the protein metabolism. So, as the requirement of energy increases, the requirement of these vitamins increases proportionately and along with b vitamins 
Vitamin C is another water soluble vitamin which is very beneficial uh, when we are discussing about the absorption of non heme iron. Vitamin C it actually helps in absorption of non heme iron. It is the iron which is coming from the cereals and uh, other vegetarian sources. A good level of vitamin A it is needed for maintaining good vision, skin and bone development. It also acts as antioxidant. And vitamin D it is also known as sunshine vitamin. It is needed for calcium absorption, for the bone growth and maintaining good bone health along with many other health benefits. Now let us study the recommended dietary allowance of various important vitamins. And for the age group 7 to 9 years, the recommendation of thiamine, riboflavin and niacin that is vitamin B1, B2 and B3, they are given in the milligrams per day. And an EAR of 1 milligram, an RDA of 1.1 uh, milligram is recommended for B1, 1.3 and 1.6 are the EAR and RDA for the riboflavin that is vitamin B2. For niacin it is 10 and 11 milligrams per day and for pyridoxin its deficiency is also very common among the school going and the other children. The EAR is 1.3 milligrams and an RDA of 1.5 milligrams is suggested in the RDA 2020. Coming to the folate its requirement it is calculated in micrograms per day. So, the EAR is 142 and an RDA of 170 microgram it is recommended for 7 to 9 year old children. Cyanocobalamin or vitamin B12 it is also calculated in micrograms per day and an EAR of 2 micrograms and an RDA of 2.2 micrograms is recommended by the RDA 2020. Coming to vitamin C, the EAR is 36 milligrams and an RDA of 45 milligrams is recommended. And uh, regarding vitamin A, it is calculated in the micrograms per day, an EAR of 290 micrograms, RDA of 630 micrograms, it is recommended. And vitamin D, it is calculated in the international units per day. So, the EAR is 400 international units and an RDA of 600 I, uh, IU is recommended for this age group. Studied about the nutritional requirements of uh, school going children. The children need to eat healthy balanced meals to meet the increasing nutrient requirements for the growth for the physical activity. During early childhood, initially the parents, they focus a lot on the food of the young child. And uh, the child is also dependent upon the parents for the intake of any kind of food which their parents, they are offering. When the child, he starts going to the school, the parental attention, it is divided towards the academic performance of the child and the focus on the food, it gets distracted. So, let's study about the food requirement of uh, these children and ways to improve the quality of the diet. At this stage, it is important to ensure that each meal carries sufficient amount of proteins, minerals and vitamins. The food needs, they are increased keeping in view the child's growth rate and the activity of the child. The children of this age, they can take most of the food which is served in the family meals except for few things such as a very spicy food or the fried food or strong tea and coffee. And the children of uh, this age, they can take almost all kind of fruits also. Even the fruits such as guava or grapes which are containing seeds. And he can eat many other foods uh, by biting and chewing such as he can take popped cereals or roasted groundnuts, Bengal gram or roasted corns or amla etc. Children usually need 4 to 5 meals. When the child goes to school, it is a good idea to allow him 
a half an hour time between the breakfast and the school time so that the child is able to take proper breakfast and the lunch time it should be midway between the breakfast and the dinner some children they need mid morning as well as mid afternoon snacks also school age period it is a period which is of steady growth and usually there are fewer eating problems which were there when the child was either toddler or he was a preschooler there is a natural increase in the appetite and this causes increase in the food consumption but along with that there are a combination of external factors which shape the selection of food of these children so let us study about what are the factors which affect the dietary pattern of the child growing independence it leads to a gradual transfer of control of the food selection from the parent to the child and therefore the parents or the caretaker they should provide the nutrition education for the children as being their role models they they should encourage the child to eat appropriate portion size Uh, and uh, eating a variety of foods and trying new foods etc because children they follow adults negative behaviors such as using food as an emotional coping mechanism or as a reward it should be discouraged and the parents they should establish uh, in children's healthy eating habits for lowering the risk of the nutrition related diseases also and the adequacy of a child's food and the nutrient intake it depends not only on the food which is available on the table but also on the environment and the models which the parents set uh, and along with that parents we have an influence coming from the siblings from the peers of the child and therefore other adults in the family also play an important role that how the child is going to develop his feeding pattern and the emotional environment at the dinner table it also influences the food and nutrient intake by the child if the environment is a comfortable uh, place and uh, there is a pleasant environment it is conducive for good eating pattern of the child but if there are arguments and the, there are family fights uh, during the eating time it will affect the food intake adversely so therefore family has a very important role in defining the food pattern or the food choices of the child school children they also establish a particular pattern of food intake which is relative to their peers what their friends are eating at school and there is a wide variation of food intake which can exist with some children who are consuming more food whereas others they are consuming the food in very small amount and there are differences in intake between the males and the female it is uh, marked uh, by around 12 years of age where boys they consume more food than the girls and along with that the elementary school children they are usually eating more and they are better fed than the preschoolers or the adolescents group acceptance is very important for children of this age group as they derive a sense of accomplishment if they are accepted and between the age of 8 to 11 years the girls may be at risk of developing certain eating disorders so the parents should be conscious about that and uh, the school children they are exposed to a food pattern which may be different from that what is happening at the home and uh, he has to accept that food which is served by their friends and try that and the dislike for the vegetable it may continue uh, in this age group also as we have seen in case of preschoolers they usually have dislike for the green leafy vegetables and the behavior at the meal time it may also be problematic because these children they are usually in hurry through the breakfast also due to early school timings and with their evening meals also because they are either engrossed in some play or some other activities and the food is not that important for them and 
excessive emphasis on the manner mannerism it may also affect the food intake ad adversely so therefore the parents they should not be that strict on the table snacks they are an important part of the diet so the meal taken on return from school it is important to meet the nutritional requirements and to have interaction with the parents so the children who do not eat breakfast at home they are more likely to buy the junk food also the parents they should give healthy breakfast at home before sending the children to the school and healthy snack when they are back from the school there are a lot of uh, distraction which compete with the meal time and if the diet is not uh, providing all the food groups which are not available to the child we cannot expect him to make healthy food choices and unrefined cereals whole grains soya and fruits and vegetables they should be included in the regular diet of the child and they should be within the reach of that child to make the healthy food choices advertising and tv they have a strong influence on the type of food chosen by the children so the parents they should know their nutrition facts and suggest their children accordingly the exposure to messages which are based on words like chocolatey rich or yummy they tempt the child to processed food and this it distorts their curiosity towards the natural flavors and the colors of the food and the use of convenience food by the mothers and the flooding of the market with the fast foods they have a great impact on the food preferences of children the school children they have more access to money so they tend to explore the food outlets at school or the nearby uh, shops of around their home and they explore and try the popularly advertised food and this can cause overfeeding and eating junk food and and uh, taking less amount of healthy food along with low physical activity they are the major contributors of the overweight and obesity so therefore uh, uh, modification in the dietary habits and making uh, healthy food choices during the childhood years it should be encouraged to avoid the obesity risk at the later ages let's summarize what we have studied in this lecture we have studied about the changes in the physical growth changes in the body composition and socio psychological changes happening during the school going childhood period and then we studied about the nutritional requirements and rda of various macronutrients that is energy protein fat and carbohydrates and then micronutrients that is minerals and vitamins and then we studied about the food requirements during this age group and feeding pattern of the school going children and the factors influencing their food choices we shall be studying about the components of meal for a school going child and what are the factors which should be considered while planning and preparing diets for the school going children and the diet related problems of the school going children in the next lecture thank you very much